Hi, this is Warner, and I'm out here uh, looking at a citrus tree in Mesa, Arizona. And I had to look a little bit to find uh, the leaf miner on this tree because uh, it had just rained last night. And we don't get much rain here, but we we do get rain and the little moths don't seem to be that active after a rain. Um, the day after a rain, they, or the second day, they, they're they pretty active. But you can see, uh, let me make sure I got the right one. You can see those little squiggles. Now what the moth does is it lays an egg and then the larvae bores uh, sh under the leaf, uh, shallowly under the leaf and makes those little squiggles. And the way you know this is the Asian citrus leaf miner and not and not some other leaf miner is because of the size of the tracks. So uh, the regular leaf miner leaves a lot bigger track. It's a, a, it's a bigger insect. So this tree is there's five of them here, and there's a number of things going on, but the root cause of the problems with this tree are the fact that it is low on energy because the leaf miner has been in here for so long. Uh, interfering with photosynthesis, and over the course of the last four or five years. We had a, a mile high dust storm, they call it a habu, that hit us a, sometime four or five years ago. And that's when I first started noticing these here, was after that habu. And so they've been in these trees for a long time and the reserves are, are so low that there are other problems that you you know, diseases that are in the tree that usually aren't a problem, but they've become problematic because the the reserves are so low. Um, trees store energy in their reserve energy in their stems and in their their roots and in the trunks. And the The chloroplast, which is the little cell that causes the leaves to be green, creates a sugar through the process of photosynthesis. And then that sugar is passed off to the mitochondria, just like with us. And the mitochondria uh, works its magic and not only produces water as a byproduct, but uh, produces a substance, the abbreviation is ATP, which the DNA then uses to manufacture uh, everything that is done, period, in the plants and animals, for that matter, is manufactured by the, by the DNA. And then those those substances, those chemicals and hormones and enzymes are stored they're stored in the roots and in the trunk and in the stems. Now, in March here, the tree draws on those resources to make the new leaves. And if the leaf miner is present, it will interfere with the leaves and they might not get any bigger than these leaves here. They get damaged uh, by something and they won't grow any, any bigger. Then the tree draws on reserves to make the blossoms. And when the blossoms are done, the tree draws on the reserves to make the fruit. So the tree is drawing on reserves to make this fruit right now. Um, and if the if the reserves are low, 
it can't put everything in the skin of the fruit that it normally would. And so the, the fruit becomes more susceptible to fungus, insect damage, sunburn. Nevertheless, the tree draws on whatever reserves it has until the fruit is done. And in the case of the orange trees, that's so oh, usually around January, something like that, depending on the species. So, and it's got about two, maybe three months after the fruit is done to stock up the reserve cells. And if the leaves are all damaged, if the chloroplasts don't have what they need, if the elements aren't there that the chloroplast needs to, for photosynthesis, um, which is, you know, what fertilizer is, the iron and the copper and the zinc and the manganese and the magnesium and the nitrogen mostly, and I might have missed a couple, the iron. If it doesn't have that stuff, then it can't do its job. And if the leaves have been damaged, in this case by not only the leaf miner, but the other insects that have been able to have their way with the tree, now that the reserves are low, then these leaves can't stock up the reserves. And that's what you're seeing on these trees. They're also more susceptible to frost damage when the reserves are low. And if, there's, if they're too low, the ends of the roots can't form that callus that they form when they're attacked by fungus, and you get, you get gamosis in the citrus or other soil-borne funguses, but it's usually gamosis, that affect the, the tips and the outer branches and cause them to die back. And usually that is also, uh, you can see signs of the gamosis by a running uh, bark. And you can just, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's just a little bit of signs of gamosis on this. Nothing to really concern ourselves about at this point if we can get these trees turned around. But you can see how so many of these leaves that are damaged, and if you think of each one of these as, as an energy producer, um, and the reserve cells as being, you know, the bank for that energy. In three or four years, the reserves are low, everything starts to go haywire. They can't defend themselves against the rust, sooty canker, all the other things that normally a healthy citrus tree can resist. And everything just has its way. And the root cause of all the problems, and this is true in Mesa, the decline of the health of the citrus tree cannot be reversed, in my opinion, until you deal with the insects that are here and specifically with the leaf miner. Okay. So this is, this is a customer of mine, and we're, we're going to take care of these trees and see if we can, if we can bring them back to health. We're going to fertilize them regularly. We're going to get rid of the leaf miner. We're going to get some mycorrhizae down in the in the soil, and it's going to take time. It takes just as it takes years for the energy to be depleted. It takes years to keep the tree in a healthy state so it can it can fill the energy reserves back up. Now, we used to see this when people would 
stop fertilizing. Everything would look fine for three or four years. And then finally the reserves would be gone. And all of a sudden, people would start to notice problems with their trees. And the problem really was that photosynthesis didn't occur on a regular basis for a number of years. And then finally the reserves were depleted and then it became apparent to people that there was something that was going on with the tree. And in those cases, it always took three or four years to, to bring them back. Now, the worst thing you can do is say, oh, I've got a, a crappy looking tree. Excuse my French, my grandmother used to say. Uh, I'm going to trim it up and make it look pretty. Now, we could do this and it would look nice. It would look better but we'd be opening the tree up for sunburn and it's almost impossible to trim one of these and just take the dead wood out. But we try when we trim. We try and just do that. But even then, we wouldn't do that to this tree until summer was over. Unless they just, unless the customer just insisted and then I might, I just might not work for somebody that insisted and was going to make me do something that I knew was wrong. So we just don't do it in the summertime unless the tree is healthy or unless it's just some little thing. If they just want a little bit off the top of this and the noticeable deadwood on the outside, we could do that. But if we went in and really went after this thing and thinned it out, uh, we wouldn't do that. And if we did, we would only do that once every three or four years. But we wouldn't do it when they were sick and in the summertime. So uh, that's it for now. This is Warner Working. If you've got a problem in the Phoenix area with your citrus trees, call me out. We can help you with it. The number is 480-969-8808.